Hello and welcome back to the Darth Magog channel. I'm your host, the Dark Lord of the Apostates, Darth Magog. And today we have a very special video presentation made especially for teachers, childcare workers, and other professionals in the field of childcare about the children of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's no secret here that the Darth Magog channel has a soft spot for teachers and educators. Clone Commander Fives, for example, is a highly trained and revered teacher that we are lucky enough to have assigned to this channel. But what the Commander will also tell you is that no Master's program will teach you everything about children. Thus, we've prepared this guide to fill in the gaps that your Bachelor's or Master's program may have left out about children in high control groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses. We would be honored if you would join us. Jehovah's Witnesses are a restorationist segment of Christianity, so many of their beliefs are similar to that of your other Christian students. They believe in the Abrahamic God of the Bible and call him by a, let's say very rough translation of his Hebrew name, Jehovah. They believe that the Bible is true literal history, and that Jesus is their king, ruling them from heaven. So while basic tenets like the Garden of Eden, the great exodus from Egypt, and the life and ministry of Jesus Christ may be familiar to you, some of their other teachings will not be. The first key difference is the beliefs in heaven and hell. Despite what you may read in some places, Jehovah's Witnesses, and by extension their children, don't believe in individuals going to heaven or hell. Mostly. The religion as a whole doesn't believe in hellfire. They instead believe that hell, or Hades, is just a state of being dead, or as they term it, the common grave of mankind. Conversely, a Jehovah's Witness child won't expect to go to heaven if he or she dies. That is reserved for specifically selected Jehovah's Witness Christians called the Anointed, basically 144,000 invisibly selected individuals from the last 2,000 years of human history who will rule in heaven as Jesus' brothers. Instead, your student will believe that they will live forever in a paradise earth that Jehovah God will provide after he destroys current world governments and all the wicked people on it. Your student also believes in a hope of resurrection, so those who die before this great destruction brought on by God will in fact be brought back to restart their good lives in perfect eternal health. So while they believe in similar concepts to heaven and hell, the executions are radically different. A second key difference is how the religion worships. The terminology is terribly complex and mostly only makes sense in the context of the religion. Unlike your students and more mainstream sects of Christianity, Jehovah's Witnesses do not go to church once a week on a Saturday or Sunday to listen to a sermon. Instead, they attend the Kingdom Hall as their place of worship, often several times a week. They do not believe in the Trinity or the Cross, instead believing Jesus as God's literal Son who died for our sins on a single upright stake. They don't learn from their priests, preachers, or deacons at the pulpit, but instead the elders, ministerial servants, and circuit overseers from the platform. And finally, they don't take up collection or tithe, they simply donate anonymously. A third and final very noticeable difference is their view of government. While Jehovah's Witnesses are commanded by their God and leaders to respect governmental authorities, their allegiance is purely to Jehovah, Jesus Christ, and his kingdom. Unlike other Christian denominations that believe God has blessed the crown or America, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that God will destroy both institutions and all others in his coming day of reckoning that they call Armageddon. As such, Jehovah's Witnesses and their children do not rise for national anthems, won't join junior military organizations, nor do they perform the Pledge of Allegiance or other such activities. This is a direct command of their religion and cannot be defied without extreme consequences. I could bluster on for days about Jehovah's Witnesses and their complicated counterculture, but that should be sufficient context for the next points that we'll review. It may surprise you to know that while your student may identify with the Jehovah's Witness religion, they may not be technically counted among Jehovah's Witnesses officially. Your students will come in two basic varieties. Type 1 is the baptized Jehovah's Witness child. You're unlikely to see a baptized Jehovah's Witness child younger than the age of 10, but it's not out of the question to have a baptized student as young as 7 or 8 years old. 
They are considered to be an official, spiritually mature member of the congregation and are given all the rank and privilege afforded to them by their gender and spirituality. Type 2 is an unbaptized Jehovah's Witness child. While this child will say that they're Jehovah's Witnesses, from the most technical perspective, they are not. They're the children of one of Jehovah's Witnesses or come from a JW family. They'll still be mandated to follow religious rules and teachings, including certain prohibitions that we'll discuss later in the video. The key difference is, since they're not a member of the religion, they're technically not beholden to the rules. Don't think of this as a loophole, though. A Jehovah's Witness child can still be severely punished by their parents for breaking a tenant of the parent's religion, even if the child doesn't buy into it themselves. It's just the religion itself won't have any religious consequences that it can impose, other than reminding the child that those who aren't Jehovah's friend are his enemy, and are beholden to destruction on his day of reckoning, including themselves. Your Jehovah's Witness child and their belief system mandate certain behaviors that will extend to the classroom, and of course, there will be consequences. As an educator, you're probably familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses door-to-door -door ministry. This is a requirement to be counted among the religion, and for personal salvation. What you may not know is that Jehovah's Witnesses are encouraged to preach wherever they go. This is called informal witnessing, where they'll preach to family members, co-workers, and, you guessed it, fellow students. Within of itself, sharing your culture with your schoolmates tends to be an enriching and educational experience. Jehovah's Witnesses, however, are also taught that all other religions of the world are false worship, originating with Satan the Devil, Satan being the ancient adversary of Jehovah and his people. The natural consequence is that your Jehovah's Witness student will have a natural distrust of other students with different religious beliefs, believing them to be, quote, in the power of the wicked one. If they are preaching, they'll naturally be doing so with an aim to teach and save those not in their religion by means of conversion, which, depending on the non-JW student's beliefs, can be a welcome change from their own religion, or could be culturally very offensive on the more negative side. In the case that your JW student offends a non-witness student, they can come off as antagonistic and potentially be labeled as weird or mean. This will feed into the next behavior and associated consequences. Jehovah's Witnesses are taught that they are living in the world but no part of it. That means they minimize interaction with those outside the congregation as a rule. So, while a witness would be friendly with neighbors, co-workers, and fellow students in the case of your JW child, they would not seek out long-lasting friendships with their classmates. In fact, a basic requirement for friendship in Jehovah's Witnesses is that the potential friend has a good relationship with Jehovah God and follows his rules to a T. In short, a friend of Jehovah's is a friend of mine. The natural consequence is that your Jehovah's Witness child will struggle with bonds and friendships in class. On the one hand, they may tend to self-isolate due to their religious beliefs. As you likely know, isolation can lead to poor sleep quality, executive dysfunction, and depression symptoms. This also creates vulnerable children with a very limited social circle who tend to be a big target for bullies. On the other hand, those children who do form strong bonds of friendship despite religious instruction are at risk in other ways. One is trying to cope with the crossroads of their religious beliefs and the kindness of people. Non-Jehovah's Witnesses, colloquially known as worldly people, are considered selfish, prideful, and generally bad association. So having a good friend who isn't a JW is in direct violation of their spiritual upbringing. Additionally, should your JW student be of the baptized variety, any strong association with children outside of the Jehovah's Witness faith could be considered a serious sin. Serious sins would be grounds for disfellowshipping, which is an excommunication from the Jehovah's Witness faith. The consequence of being disfellowshipped is that the disfellowship witness would lose all social contact with their friends and family of the same faith. 
As a minor child, your student would technically still be permitted to live in their family home, and their parents would still take care of them as far as they're legally obligated, but social and spiritual contact would be minimal. Though there are reported cases of minor children being sent to live with non-JW relatives in some cases after a disfellowshipping. A severe consequence for fulfilling a natural, age-appropriate desire, like having friends with similar interests in your age group. A core part of the Jehovah's Witness belief system is true worship. Jehovah's Witnesses and their parent organization, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, believe that they have the truth. This is brought to them by Jehovah himself through his earthly representatives, the governing body. These are the ten Jehovah's Witness leaders who direct the religion in upstate New York. Think of them as the Jehovah's Witness Jedi Council, only without the cool superpowers and lightsabers. Part of following true worship is rejecting false worship. False worship includes pretty much any holiday and all birthday celebrations. The Jehovah's Witness reasoning boils down to these three. Most holidays have roots in superstition. Other holidays have roots in unscriptural pagan practices. And finally, there is no record of Jehovah or Jesus ordering these celebrations in the Bible. So Jehovah's Witness children are forbidden from partaking in Christmas, Easter, Halloween, any patriotic holiday, their own birthday, their classmates' birthdays, Mother's and Father's Day, pretty much any holiday. In fact, the only celebration that Jehovah's Witnesses partake in is what they call the Day of the Memorial, which is a religious observance where they fundamentally hold a yearly funeral for Jesus. But don't expect anything enriching there. There are no songs, presents, decorations, or special rituals that children get to participate in. It's just basically an extra kingdom hall meeting. The result of this prohibition on holidays is more loneliness and isolation. Your JW child will be forbidden by their religion and their parents in singing holiday songs, painting holiday pictures, attending any holiday parties, watching holiday-themed films, receiving holiday gifts and treats, and absolutely cannot interact with any holiday mascot. Instead, these children are often left in the halls, library, or computer lab if they're lucky. It's very likely that your Jehovah's Witness student will be left feeling lonely, othered, confused, and frustrated depending on their relationship with the theology during these school-sponsored activities, especially if the activity is a passion of theirs, like music or acting in a school play. Additionally, birthday celebrations are outright banned in a similar degree, meaning that your JW student will not be allowed to celebrate their special day like others in the class, nor can they support their classmates in such an endeavor. All invitations to birthday parties will need to be rejected on principle. This is not an indication that your JW student doesn't like your other students or want to participate, simply a consequence of their parents' association with this religion. Jumping off from the last point, be advised that your Jehovah's Witness child, like other children, will have many passions. They may love sports, acting, music, technology, or be otherwise gifted. This is not uncommon in Jehovah's Witness culture. Some Jehovah's Witnesses are quite talented in their fields of passion, like the late singers Prince and Selena, as well as the newly baptized Serena Williams, professional tennis player. But these may all be for naught. Often, Jehovah's Witness children are admonished to put their gifts second. The organization admonishes its members, and by extension their children, to put the kingdom first. This means living with the goal of what's called full-time service, or volunteering to preach full-time, build kingdom halls and construction detail, or do other work at Jehovah's Witness headquarters offices around the world, known in the religion as Bethels. Additionally, joining an after-school club or team means more mandatory interaction with non-spiritual people, known as bad association in the religion, which is heavily discouraged, if not forbidden outright. The consequences of this attitude is that, to make room for spiritual things, other pursuits receive little to no time. While school and family are both mandatory requirements for a Jehovah's Witness student, Extracurricular activities like science clubs, track teams, and the martial arts would range from discouraged to outright forbidden depending on the activity. 
So, while your JW student may have unique innate talents, it is unlikely they'll have time to foster them while within the religion. Invitations and letters of recommendation will be flattering, but academics, athletics, and the arts fall short of their family's devotion to Jehovah. As in many religions, families are expected to be very close-knit in Jehovah's Witness culture, and often, this extends to the larger Jehovah's Witness network known as a spiritual family. Members of the Christian congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses refer to one another as brothers and sisters, regardless of age. This strengthens their spiritual familial bond. The hierarchy of the organization is mimicked in the home, where all JW households are run by the father or the closest male relative in some cases. That's because, in JW culture, wives are meant to be in submission to their husbands, so long as he is submissive to God, and even when he isn't, provided that said husband isn't directly contradicting God. The consequence to this is that Jehovah's Witness children are constantly bombarded with spirituality in all forms. Entertainment, socialization, and even discipline. The culture heavily encourages discipline in inculcating spiritual things into your children immediately from birth. In fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses' own flagship periodical, The Watchtower, had this to say in its August 2013 issue. But it is also important for them to plan how they will teach their baby about Jehovah. Their goal should be to begin teaching the baby very soon after the baby is born. The children are brought to all religious functions, including an hour-and-a-half weekly meeting on Sundays, another two-hour meeting on a weeknight, several trips into the door-to-door -door ministry on weekends, as well as continuing their personal study and family worship nights, meaning there's no space in between spaces of worship, family spaces, and personal space. Worship seeps into all aspects of Jehovah's Witness life. This results in Jehovah's Witness children not only being forced to accept the religion right away, it prevents their exploration of other faiths and cultures, or at least suppresses them, limiting their autonomy. And in some cases, it tends to perpetuate the more distasteful parts of the religion. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and we believe the Bible teaches sex is for a man and a woman who are married. Again, through no fault of their own, never being given a choice from birth, but the actions still tend to be harmful, especially to other oppressed groups. As outlined previously, Jehovah's Witnesses live in a patriarchal society, starting with Jehovah and Jesus, male-presenting spirit beings, down to the governing body and elders, an all-male group of religious leaders, and fathers. Mothers are really only in charge of the children, and that only applies if you're straight. Jehovah's Witnesses place marriage on a divine pedestal and firmly believe that only a man and a woman can be married, and that the man is the head of the family. An unfortunate consequence of this is that your JW student is going to be treated differently in the congregation depending on their gender. Men and young boys are instructed to take the lead in the congregation, as women are forbidden to teach. So a male Jehovah's Witness student in your class will likely be pushed into leadership roles in the congregation out of necessity, while a female JW student will be ignored and shuffled to the back even if she openly volunteers. And that's if they're straight. If any of them start to identify as LGBTQ+, they will be looked down upon by their religion. The faith does not see gay and trans relationships as valid, and doesn't acknowledge anyone's marriage that is not a one-to-one -one heterosexual marriage. Despite other alternative lifestyles being presented in the Bible, worst case scenario, you may find your JW student parroting this back even in a classroom setting. I haven't covered every behavior you may see from your JW student, but this should be a good place to start. Now, I'd like to present my tips for addressing your JW student, or really my wish list of things I had when I was a Jehovah's Witness child at school. First, have a sit down with the parents, or at least an email exchange. Different Jehovah's Witness parents tend to have different standards. Despite the Jehovah's Witness claim of unity, some families tend to take the religion more seriously than others. 
Some parents may be fine with their children learning about different cultural religions from an academic standpoint, and some may be fine with their child participating in after-school activities. And fact of the matter is, some Jehovah's Witness children will adamantly hold on to their beliefs because of their culturally mandated blind obedience to their parents. But these students may not fully understand the beliefs and may not be able to offer insight as to what's permissible and what is not. Mom and Dad should have all the guidelines that you need. Be warned, they may throw some literature at you or encourage their kid to do so. Your mileage may vary. Secondly, hold a place for alternative activities if possible. If your December curriculum includes only math problems about sugar plums and candy canes, you're going to ruin your Jehovah's Witness child's day. And unlike your Muslim and Jewish students, there isn't an analog to Christmas to substitute in. Instead, if possible, I might suggest a more general version of an assignment. It doesn't have to be JW themed, but perhaps something themed around your JW student's passions. If they're a musician, perhaps your math problem can be about guitars and saxophones. If you're coloring pictures of Santa, maybe we can substitute them for an age-appropriate art of their favorite superhero. And maybe just a non-holiday themed treat day or potluck from time to time would be a nice alternative to the dreaded school holiday party and dances. Again, this is a great time to involve the parents of your JW student. They may be able to provide some prompts or even coloring pages for younger students. This won't resolve your witness student's feelings of being othered, but being prepared with something special for them feels a lot better than them being a lonely, sobbing afterthought in the back of the library while the rest of your class exchange valentines. And with parental involvement, it'll likely be easier on your already very thin budget. And finally, the last thing to do is be a safe space. You probably already do this for your students, but growing up in a high-control religious group like Jehovah's Witnesses comes with a lot of built-in cognitive dissonance. You're taught misinformation by the group, which is presented as the only unquestionable truth, while verifiable truths are said to originate from Satan who is out to get you, specifically because Satan doesn't want you to have everlasting life and anyone can be an agent of his, including non-JW family members, authority figures, and even teachers. And frankly, even a child can be exhausted by the rigorous requirements placed upon them by this religion. Their social skills may be limited, their bullying may be constant, their gifts may go unnurtured. These aren't all hard and fast rules of being a Jehovah's Witness child, but even the religion itself tends to expect such a life for the children of its members. At the end of the day, the goal of this guide isn't to burden our already overburdened educators. You're all often underpaid, overworked, and underappreciated, if not outright abused in and out of a classroom setting. What we hope to accomplish with this guide, however, is to promote more understanding between Jehovah's Witness students and their worldly teachers who otherwise wouldn't have the time or energy to commit to learning a lifetime of doomsday religious cult dogma. And again, we certainly don't blame you for that. This religion is exhausting for everyone involved. Well, except for about 10 very specific guys chilling in upstate New York. If you have further questions about your Jehovah's Witness students or their beliefs, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. We also extend a warm, dark side of the force thank you to any and all educators on the platform, whether you finish this lengthy tutorial or not. And to the rest of our XJW agents, remember that the Elders may be watching you, but Darth Magog is watching the Watchtower.